Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. It's another Q&A episode a couple days late. All right, well, it's probably almost, if I had a watch, it's almost about two weeks late, but hey, better late than never, right? Um, I also wanted to mention something because you're going to hear some background noise. I mean, you actually may hear nothing during this episode, but you may hear some background noise, uh, which normally I try to actually kind of quell and just eliminate entirely except for like other people's pets. But you may hear people saying that people should scream or it sounds like I'm in like a war zone. Uh, and I haven't really let on all that much about where exactly I live for obvious reasons. But uh, anyways, I happen to live very near to the Arizona State Fairgrounds in Central Phoenix. And guess what time of year it is? It's The State Fair is going on literally in my backyard and it's loud and annoying. So instead of trying to get this done and, and think about all the noise going on, I'm just going to make fun of it. So, and there it is now. Police, police sirens, but not no, police are really not on their way. So, uh, Q and A episodes. Now we got that out of the way. It's going to be a fun one. I'm just it's kind of at the end of the week and, and so forth. Uh, lots of content, by the way, coming out. A couple, or probably you're seeing this and a couple other videos that have just launched, and another one is coming your way within the next 24 hours. So lots of stuff coming uh, to your uh, to your. Uh, I was going to say your YouTube inbox. Is that a thing? Anyways, whatever. Um, if you're subscribed, I'm sure it comes in. Uh, this is the Q&A episodes, the monthly Q&A episodes that uh, are generated from your questions. You can get me at smarterhomehelp.com. It's just kind of a quick address that forwards right to the kind of contact page if you need smart home help. And uh, whether it's just a basic question or if you've got an advanced question or um, so, uh, you're working on a big project and you need some, you know, kind of actual consulting and some help, you can set up a consulting appointment directly with me. And I love doing those. In fact, just the other day, I did a consulting session with someone with a viewer in Kenya. So I've literally been doing these. See, there goes the dogs, the dogs, the fairs, all the kind of things. So I love doing the consulting sessions. They're really great. I love answering your emails and I've got three great emails from last month um, that I'm going to do right now. So smarterhomehelp.com, send those in. And uh, I think yeah, we've had a couple in October so far. So uh, please do send them in and uh, did they, ge they generate the questions. I get back to you in a couple days and then we go forward and, and move forward. So with that being said, let's go to the first question, which comes in from Michael Arnold. This one's actually a really, really, really simple one. Hi, I have Android and the people I live with use Apple. Uh, can we both use voice Alexia? She didn't go off. Well, I, I didn't say her name right. So uh, Google, or whatever Apple calls it, that would be Siri, of course, um, or just use one. I just bought a smart lock and found out that I had to get a smart thing, a Samsung smart things hub to kind of make use of the lock, you know, to its fullest potential. Uh, the short answer is uh, you can use whatever you like. And in fact, you can use all three of them. In fact, I do because I test these things. I kind of don't use Siri like I use Siri Hopefully I didn't set up your devices, but she's usually uh, voice specific. But anyhow, um, I use it for timers and dialing phone calls and things like that. Uh, and I do, I'm still using the good old Echo Cube or the Fire TV Cube or whatever the heck that Amazon should have called it. Um, that's down over there. I use that on a regular basis. I use my Google Home uh, devices on a regular basis. And uh, so you can use whichever you like. It doesn't matter who you live with and whatever they use. There's no real conflict. The, the great thing about the smart home of today is that if you get I'm not going to say every device, but of course we know that a lot of device manufacturers make them compatible specifically with Alexa and Google Assistant. Um, and to a certain extent, they're working on the software upgrades to make them compatible with HomeKit so they don't have to, the, they don't have to release dedicated versions of them. Um, but again, if you're using something like SmartThings, you're going to link it to that. SmartThings, you can command all the things that are connected to it from Lady A, from Google Assistant, not from HomeKit, unfortunately, or Siri. But the moral of the story, mix and match, use them. The assistants are not going to talk to each other and you will be kind of completely sandboxed from, they'll be separate, like Alexa's it's not gonna talk to Google or talk to Siri, but you really don't need that anyways. But pick one, use all three, it doesn't really matter if you're in a mixed household. Totally cool. Totally fine. Thanks for writing in. It's a good question. I think people kind of like to know that and obviously you wrote it. So thanks, Michael, for your question. And let's move on to question number two before we get to our little house ad, house break. Um, I just love how there's viewers in like everywhere. Again, like, you know, around the U.S., Kenya, now Iceland. From Herman, I'm not going to try your last name because it I'll probably 
butcher it. So, hi, thank you for all of your videos. I watch them very much. Well, I make them very much for you to watch them very much. Uh, bad English, I'm sorry, not, not gonna make fun of that. Uh, I need some help. I have HomeKit and Philips Hue light system in my home, and I now have 50 lights and 20 switches. Holy cow. I hope you have a very, I hope your home is larger than mine because I don't even have 50 lights in here. I don't think, I think it was like 30 at last count, but anyways, not Hue, but he has 50 Hue lights and 20 switches. I should have it in my hand, but I don't. The little, he may have one of the, uh, the Hue tap or the little wireless dimmer switches. Um, I can use, uh, how can I use two Philips Hue bridges with HomeKit without a problem? And if not, is there some other good solution? Well, I'm going to go through what I emailed him back because the challenge is there isn't, uh, well, there's one or two solutions that s people seem to agree that work. Um, but the challenge is you can only have, well, Philips Hue says you can only have 50 lights or a combination of 50 lights and accessories like the Hue Tap, the motion sensor, uh, and the little wireless dimmer um, device as well on basically 50 Zigbee devices, let's just call it by its real name, um, on the Philips Hue Bridge. Now, some people have been able to do more than that, um, but really that's the limit that Philips put in place. And for most people, that's probably fine. They may have done it for performance purposes, but uh, certainly there are other systems that also begin with a Z that I don't think um, have the, a 50 device limitation. I'm pretty sure that they do not. Um, one way to get around this is with HomeKit. The reason why is because HomeKit utilizes more of a direct local connection between your phone, your Apple TV, any of your iOS devices, and the Philips Hue bridge. It does not go out to the cloud and come back, you know, bouncing off of satellites um, to just do the control. That's part of Apple's, you know, security stipulation. They really want all that um, communication to happen inside your home and on your network. So people, there have been, based on the forums and so forth, people have reported some good results in actually using HomeKit to link up to multiple bridges, which also gets around another problem. According to also information uh, from people posting and, and uh, Philips itself, you can't, you know, the Hue system has remote access built in. So if you, if you just have a whole bunch of Hue lights and the Hue bridge and you don't have Alexa or Google or HomeKit or any of that other stuff or no other smart hubs and you still want to access your lights and control them and do some, you know, some basic automation from say outside your home. They have a remote system that, you know, you can get in through the app. Um, but it means that basically your bridge is connected to the Philips Hue cloud system. So that's how they can get you that remote access. Apparently you can only connect one Philips Hue a bridge per account to the cloud at one time. So that causes a problem if you have multiples and you wanted to actually control them at the same time. Um, plus you have to switch it in the app. Eh, it's just not a great experience. I think Philips just didn't imagine this was gonna be a big, uh, something that would happen on any regular basis, except for people who just have a large home and lots of Philips Hue lights. So HomeKit's a way around it. You get the local control. It goes direct to the bridge. doesn't go to the Philips Hue cloud. And you could add both Philips Hue bridges within HomeKit. HomeKit also can, pardon the pun, can bridge both bridges because then you can set up scenes within HomeKit that affect the lights on bridge, say, one and bridge two at the same time, which means that you then gain full access to both bridges, both sets of lights, and you can really do a lot of power. Now, I don't have two Philips Hue bridges. I can't test that. Um, there Again, this is based on forum postings and me just searching and chatting and so forth. So I think that's one possible solution. And, and if it does work, that's a great solution. Some other people have talked about the Yeti app. Now, Yeti is kind of the third or the fourth in the line of apps such as Yonomi and Stringify and I think there's another one, but I think Yeti might just be the third one. Yeti being the kind of imaginary creature that doesn't really exist in, in real life, uh, but it does exist as, as a home automation uh, smart home app for, um, I believe it's for iOS and Android as well. Uh, Yeti says they actually can connect to four Philips Hue bridges at once. 
Now, I would also imagine they're doing some kind of local control because you can't, according to Philips, you can't have those active um, at the same time in the Philips Hue cloud. Unless they're doing separate accounts, uh, I haven't, again, I only have one Philips Hue bridge, can't, can't actually test this out. Um, but if you have the Yeti app, that is possible. I believe the Yeti is free, so it's something that you could give it a shot. Again, also uh, HomeKit is free if you've got iOS devices. Um, and it, it also, based on some, I did some additional digging with Wink and smart things. It looks like you can't do it that way either. So it looks like it's either Yeti or HomeKit or I'm leaving out the other, so I left out the other solutions for him because I, I'm imagining that he may not be someone who wants to get into coding and so forth. I know some of you will raise your hand and say, oh, wait, don't forget about Home Assistant and Indigo, which I use and other, you know, smart home platforms that are kind of code and, and programming based. If you're willing to, to, to dig into that stuff, yeah, you could probably link multiple bridges because you're just using a local connection and not going to the Philips Hue cloud. In fact, that's how my Philips Hue connection works uh, between Indigo running on the Mac back there and uh, the Philips Hue bridge. It doesn't go to their cloud, it's local. So I could probably add multiple bridges, but again, that's kind of a really more of a DIY solution, which I don't think that that, uh, that uh, Herman was uh, looking for, um, especially because he's talking about HomeKit. So that is the answer. Thank you, uh, Herman, for your kind words. It's that time in the monthly Q&A video where I talk about little house ad things, Patreon, and basically say that uh, a portion of Smart Home Life is brought to you by you. There is a handful of people all right, there's more than a handful of people who uh, contribute on a regular basis. They get some bonuses, some little behind the scenes stuff. I give them a really nice uh, update on what's going on that uh, the public doesn't get um, on every month. And you can learn more about uh, how to help out the show at patreon.com slash smarter home life. You set the budget, if it's a buck a month, five bucks a month, $500 a month. I'll probably have to send you a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> with that. But otherwise, uh, it's a great way to help out the show and you get a couple little bonuses. But basically, you're actually uh, helping the budget and uh, we'll talk about little things here and uh, how the budget helps out um, or how your contributions help. I really can't talk. I've been doing way too much video editing in a bunch. It's just been a crazy week. How's your week been? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right. Uh, so beyond Patreon, uh, stuff coming up. There's some great content coming up um, throughout the fall season. It ties in also with, and I've hinted at this, and it's going to happen. It's kind of scary because I don't know where I'm going at this point, but I'm going somewhere. We are uh, just at a, about the 90-day mark. Probably it's probably maybe 100 days, 110 or 120 days from about now where I will be leaving this place. Oh my goodness, yes, it is time to move on. I've been here this month, four years. It's been longer than I anticipated. It's been a great experience. It's become, this home has become the backdrop for Smarter Home Life in ways that I never intended it to. Uh, but anyways, other things coming up uh, really close uh, and kind of the, again, the Patreon people kind of get this stuff before you guys do. Um, these just arrived basically today and the other day this one's going to be hilarious because it's probably the most proprietary device that uh, has ever existed. The good old Amazon Basics Smart Plug that only works with, you guessed it, Alexa. And the brand new uh, Echo Dot, uh, the one that's got kind of curves and cloth and all that good stuff. So that's coming early next week. I have to take a little bit of a break from crazy work schedules to get all this stuff done and then uh, shoot that stuff early next week, get you some comparisons. And I'm looking forward to actually seeing how that sounds. Uh, why I'm even bothering with it is because yes, it generates views. People will be interested in it. And generally I'm interested in it and need to kind of keep up with these things. Generally not going to be re reviewing that many more products, especially the expensive stuff. The budget for the show just doesn't support it. Uh, the CD video, uh, which I was at CD about a month ago. So that's that was shot being edited and uh, that'll come out in the next 24 hours or so. So that was the big smart home, the high-end smart home show. But uh, throughout the fall season, basically there's going to be some how-to content around the, this place. I'm going to greatly expand upon the tour that I did last year that everybody loved, but people want the details of the how and the why and the this and the that. So it's probably going to be a five or six part mini series. 
of everything that I've gone through over the, all the different changes and, the, and again, the how and the why and the reasons and the lighting and the tiny home aspects and the tech and the colors and design, all that stuff uh, will, get sh will get shown off and, and also kind of the, the real life of living and working and using this as basically a, a YouTube uh, TV production studio. Uh, basically, I just sleep in the back. That's why you never see the bedroom because it's a mess. But anyhow, that's coming up. Obviously, there will be a holiday gift guide. There's going to be some uh, great content with the holiday kind of light show thing. I've promised for a while. Still have to get that out, but that's coming very soon because the holidays will be upon us very shortly. And then CES will be here, and then it'll be time to move, and you'll get to uh, meet some people and some animals and things, I think, in January and hear all the things about, you know, dogs barking and figure out who all these people are. So the last question comes in from overseas once again. This is from Marcel Miro. Hello, Mr. Duganzik. It's a very formal greeting. Well, hello, Mr. Miro. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I really, really love your content and basically all of your channel. I find it informative, helpful, and your way of communicating and speaking with viewers is one of the best I've seen in my 10 years watching YouTube. Well, wow, I think that's the highest compliment ever. So thank you, Marcel. I want to make sure I get the name right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, it's uh, in, in on another complete tangent, which I won't even go into. It's been about 10 years since I actually became a content creator on certain levels uh, back November of 2008. Goodness, it's been a long time. See, there's a dog again. Anyways, you'll meet him in January. I'm moving from Spain to the United Kingdom. He is not. I'm, I'm not. Uh, to a university to study. I would love to have a room where every morning when I switch off my daily alarm, the smart dorm informs me of the local weather, the news that's relevant to me, as in what's coming from Spain, because that's where he's moving from, uh, and maybe possibly switching the lights on, although I can't change bulbs or change anything from the room as it's property of the university. I'll get to that in a second. Um, also, when I say goodnight, I wanted to switch the lights off. Turn on the monitor, Amazon Fire TV stick, you know, probably watch TV perhaps. Um, not sure why you would turn it on. I think probably maybe turn the monitor off. Why would you turn it on if you're going to bed? Anyways, um, if possible, go to the last scene content. Oh, okay. So good night means I'm going to watch TV for an hour. Not really like good night, go to bed. Okay. Anyway, maybe I'll edit that out. Maybe not. Uh, when I say PlayStation, I would love the monitor switches to PS4. Uh, over HDMI, uh, turns the monitor on, all those things. That you can probably, he suggested this, some of that you're probably going to have to do. Uh, he actually mentioned uh, Logitech Harmony here. Some of that when you get into uh, AV stuff, you may have to jump over to Harmony or some kind of solution that's going to be able to deal with the um, infrared control um, if you've got some kind of like HDMI switcher. He talked about, you know, you can't switch out the lights. Well, and I was talking to someone, uh, the person, uh, the viewer that I was talking to in, in Kenya the other day, and I said, you know, well, you know, smart lights are great because all you have to do is unscrew your lights and screw the new ones in. And Marcel is saying, you know, he can't change them out. Well, it's always better to just ask for forgiveness later, right? If you actually have light bulbs in your dorm that you can just reach up, change out, and you're... I don't know if you're going to be there by yourself, if it's, you know, your own room or you got a roommate or whatever. As long as someone doesn't steal your stuff. I can't imagine, like when I went to college, there weren't that many like dorm inspections. But then again, that was a while ago. It was here in the States. I don't know how things work in the UK. I would say, and don't sue me if, you know, don't, please, I accept no responsibility for saying this, but you have to base it on your gut instinct. If you can just change a light bulb out temporarily, just change it out. You know what I mean? But if you've got something that says, like, you cannot change anything, then maybe don't do it. But again, ask for forgiveness later. Yeah. Change out the light bulbs. Maybe try one. See if anyone cares. Okay? Um, if it's a permanent light fixture, if it's some kind of proprietary thing, then don't bother. Don't do any wiring. You can't change thermostats. I mean, dorms are kind of different animals anyways. They're kind of like little mini hotel rooms. So you have to kind of base it on what you can really do. But lights are the easiest thing. Light bulbs, smart lights, super easy. And you could always um, add different types of lighting. If you can't change your light bulbs, maybe you leave some of the switches off and you put in your own fixtures, desk lamps and floor lamps and put smart lights in those things. You could get light strips. You have to kind of just use your imagination um, if you can't actually change out 
uh, lights because of some crazy regulation. But like I said, ask for forgiveness later. Um, so let's talk. He also asked about, you know, what should I use? Should I use Alexa? Should I use? I don't think he's in the Apple world. I think he's in Android, um, even though I didn't mention it. But I, I feel like he's not in the Apple world. He didn't mention anything about it. Apple, from what I recall. Um, so switching, so trying to decide between Alexa and, or let's just say Amazon and Google. You know, the more you read articles these days, everyone actually is actually having trouble recommending which platform because they've now become very similar. You know, are they exactly the same? No. The voices are different? Sure. One of them is going to pick up your voice better. One's going to have better access to information about like the world versus, you know, Amazon's going to have better access to like 50,000 skills of which people use like three. Um, the skills thing with like Amazon promising, we have all these skills. It's kind of like the app store saying, we have 4 billion apps. Yeah, and you use 10 of them. So I think they're very, very similar at this point. Studies have now really shown, and anecdotally, I mean, what do we use these things for? Timers, lighting control. We're not using these things for anything that's really super advanced. And again, even like he's saying, he just wants to use it for a couple of these things. You can easily set these things up via routines. You don't need a smart things hub. You don't need any of those things. Um, you can do pretty much all of this through these assistants. Google's going to have um, a different way of doing some communications, you know, with like phone calls. Uh, Amazon's going to have, you know, their built-in Alexa communication system. So you, you we're, we're, we're talking about apples and oranges, but they're kind of becoming like the same fruit, like apples and apples here. So one of the things, and this just happened, I actually am happy that I waited as long as I did to create this video because, of course, a couple days ago was the Made by Google event where we got the we got confirmation of all the leaked products. Of course, we got the Pixel XL, I mean, the Pixel 3 uh, and the XL. We've got also the Google Home Hub, which, and they just recently updated the Google Home app. And uh, actually, I'm going to just pull this off, and I don't know if this is going to work very well. Um, now, basically, if you download the Google Home app, you get kind of a control center. I'm going to say a la HomeKit, but it's not quite the same. Um, but it's a good attempt. And if you put it on a tablet, it looks almost identical. I want to make sure that's actually showing up. It's probably probably not. I'll probably just put a screenshot up instead. If you put it on a tablet, you basically get the brand new Google Home Hub without buying the Google Home Hub. But of course, you know, that comes with a smart speaker and all the other stuff, of which I have like 10 of because... I review this stuff. But anyways, um, I think that uh, of the two and, and of people who've looked at what Amazon has tried to do on the Echo Show with their little kind of control center uh, or some smart home controls on, on the Echo Show, Google at this point has them beat with this new control center or they, I think they call it home view of basically which you get a listing and a kind of an easy way to control your lights, your thermostat, to look at your smart uh, doorbells, which probably wouldn't apply to him. Um, I mentioned thermostat, smart locks, um, and it breaks all the devices out by room just as you already have it set up. So if you already are in the Google Home world, the Google Assistant world, and you have everything set up anyways, they just downloading in, uh, the new updated version of the Google Home app gives you this whole brand new display um, which is which is really cool, and that shows that Google's kind of really trying to move the ball forward um, on this, and um, and I think that's what we need more of. So that's an interesting development. Uh, if that sways you more towards the Google ecosystem, which is the primary one that I use, fantastic. I did look up some information based on what's available, you know, Amazon versus Google, uh, in terms of getting information and news from your original, from your home country. It's really going to depend. It's going to wind up being you're going to get podcasts. You might be able to get some information. It didn't, from what I remember, it didn't look like um, to get that information on the Amazon side. You have to do it through the flash briefing. On the Google side, you have a lot more um, flexibility with how you set up um, a routine like a good morning, and you can have it play news or information um, that's going to come from a more localized uh, source. So, like I said. Each one, they're so close, but each one just got a little bit of a difference that it's, when you get into these little nitpick uh, details, 
um, this is where kind of the, the rubber meets the road for whether you pick Google or whether you pick Lady A. Alexa, just in case you don't understand. People still don't understand, like I'm saying Lady A, and that's what I mean. Because I don't want to set off your devices. So but I could say Alexia. She didn't go off, so hopefully that didn't do it. I think I've talked enough. Thank you, Marcel, for the wonderful... Uh, Wonderful, wonderful, kind words uh, at the beginning and the end also of your uh, your email. Um, it was wonderful. I hope I helped you out. And with that, and uh, dogs barking in the fair, people screaming their heads off on carnival rides, that is it for this Q&A from Phoenix, Arizona uh, on this day. Uh, I think this is the, uh, the 13th, 14th, 12th. October 12th, uh, I think, uh, 2018. And uh, if you got questions, of course, for me, that's how these are generated, smarterhomehelp.com. You can find a lot of other stuff at smarterhomelife.com or, of course, here on YouTube. Check out the various uh, social media accounts. There are some occasional links that I do post between videos, uh, so if you want to follow it there. Yeah, but pretty much this is where everyone's at because this is where I post the most content because I make videos about the smart home right here on Smart Home Life. I think I'd, I need to wrap this up. That's it. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next time right here on Smart Home Life.